Now, this is an application that I'm really excited to share with you. Microsoft have recently released their Windows Terminal application. This is fantastic, especially in combination with WSL version two. This is a free application available in the Microsoft Store written by Microsoft that allows you to interact very easily with Windows PowerShell, the Windows Command Prompt, as well as your virtual machines running within WSL version two. It also allows you to do many other things, such as SSHing to servers or routers or switches or telnetting to those devices. You can actually configure it to SSH from Windows or use one of your virtual machines running within WSL version two to SSH two devices. Fantastic development from Microsoft. It's really nice to see how things have changed at Microsoft and how they are now releasing open source applications such as Windows Terminal. But rather than me just talking about this application, let me demonstrate what's possible. Let me show you how to configure this, how to change options such as copy and paste, how to add a background image and many other things. Okay, let's get started. Now in this demonstration, I'm using this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling it using VNC from my Mac. That just makes it easier to do the recordings, but I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. Now in the bad old days, if you wanted to SSH to a server or to a device, you could use an application such as Putty. Windows didn't have SSH built into it. So I'd have to use an application like Putty to SSH to, in this example, a Cisco router. I have to accept the public key, and then I'll be able to log in, as an example, to my Cisco router. So as you can see here, show version shows me that I'm connected to a Cisco 1941 router. You do something similar if you wanted to SSH to a Ubuntu server, as an example. This software is really, really old and hasn't been updated for many, many years. Now Microsoft has started supporting SSH within Windows 10. So if I open up a command prompt and type SSH, I can actually SSH directly to a device. So I could use a basic command prompt like this to SSH to a device. But notice I have a traditional command prompt or CMD prompt running here. If I wanna use PowerShell, I'd open up a separate terminal, and now I have PowerShell running. But I don't have a tabbed solution. Well, that's until very recently. As mentioned, Microsoft have released the Windows Terminal application. This allows you to run PowerShell, Command Prompt, and various other terminal connections in a tabbed application. So as an example, this is Ubuntu 20.04 running within WSL version two. Here's Ubuntu 18.04. So the command lsb release dash a shows me that this is Ubuntu 18.04. So notice Windows PowerShell command prompt. This is the traditional command prompt that's been around in Windows for many, many years. ipconfig shows my IP address on my Windows 10 laptop as an example. Here I've got Ubuntu 20.04 running within WSL version two. And here I've got 18.04. But you can customize this application very easily by going to settings. I've opened up the settings.json file within Visual Studio Code and notice many, many options are available here for customization. And you can click on the links within that JSON file to see the documentation for Windows Terminal and how to configure, for instance, global settings or profile settings or color schemes or key bindings and a whole bunch of other things. So the documentation explains very clearly how you can configure things, but I'm gonna demonstrate some of these options now because I wanna show you that you can also use Windows terminal to SSH to network devices. In this example, I'm gonna SSH to a Cisco Nexus device hosted by Cisco in the cloud. 
So I am SSHing from here in the UK to probably somewhere in the US where this device is hosted. So as an example, show version shows me that this is a Nexus 9000V. I added that myself and I'll show you in a moment how to do that. So by clicking on this little down arrow, I can add a whole bunch of options to Windows Terminal. You could, as an example, connect it to Azure. I could Telnet to a device. So this is using Windows to Telnet to a router. Now, generally, you don't want to use Telnet because it's insecure, the passwords can be hacked, but I wanted to show you that it is possible to use Telnet within this application. So I'm SSHing to a Nexus device. I'm Telnetting to a Cisco router. I could SSH to a Cisco router. And notice here, I've done some customization where I'm showing an icon or a picture. So I can log in to the Cisco router, which is a Cisco 1941 router within Windows Terminal. That SSH session is using Windows, but you can actually do very clever things. So as an example here, I'm going to use Ubuntu 2004, which is a lightweight virtual machine running within WSL version two, running on Windows to SSH to the same router. So I'm using Ubuntu now to SSH and not Windows. So this session is SSHing from my Windows laptop to a Cisco router. This session is using an Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two it's actually this 2004 LTS Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two to SSH to the Cisco router. A whole bunch of options are available here. No longer do you need to use PuTTY. You can use this free tabbed application from Microsoft to make SSH or Telnet connections to routers, switches, servers, etc. This application supports a whole bunch of keystrokes. So as an example, Control Shift W closes tabs. So Control Shift W, notice I'm closing my tabs and I've only got PowerShell now. I can open tabs by using this number. So as an example, Control Shift 1 opens PowerShell, but Control Shift 2 opens this Windows PowerShell using customized colors. So Hence, I've called it my colors. I've customized the colors. Control Shift 3 would open up a command prompt as an example. So notice this is traditional command prompt. And I could do the same thing to open any one of these other sessions. So Control Shift 9, I'm SSHing to a Cisco 1941 router. I've also customized the prompt with an image on the bottom right here. And I could log in to my Cisco router. I can also use Alt Shift Plus to open the default application, which in my example is PowerShell, and open Windows this way. Alt Shift W will open another window that way. Control Shift W will close the tabs. So I'll go back to my original tabs. Once again, in the settings, I can specify a whole bunch of options, including the default profile that gets opened when I use those keystrokes. So what's gonna be opened when I press Alt Shift Plus? It's going to be PowerShell because notice this GUID is the default profile that gets opened. I can create multiple profiles. This is a default one. This is my default PowerShell over here. And I'll just close some of these tabs. Here is the Windows PowerShell with my colors. So default versus my colors. And what I did is I created this. So I simply copied the default. This is in JSON formatting. So this is a nice way to learn JSON as an example. I simply copied that and then I created this. And notice I changed the name to this. That's what's displayed over here. The command I'm gonna run is powershell.exe. I'm not hiding this tab. The color scheme is different to the default color scheme. I'm using Campbell PowerShell color scheme. And you can see all those details once again 
in the documentation. So under profile settings, you can see what the unique identifier is, what the executable is that's gonna be run, as an example, CMD. You can see drop-down setting options, such as the name, the icon used. So once again, going back in here, the icon that I used is test.ico in the temp directory. Now I simply used a Docker icon here. Now that's just to show you an example. You probably wanna use something better than that. But notice this little icon is showing as a Docker icon because that's what I selected over here. Color scheme is Campbell PowerShell. So hence, the color is blue rather than black. Lots of customization options. The reason that this shows as the second option in the dropdown is because it's in the second place in the JSON file. So it's Windows PowerShell and then Windows PowerShell My Colors. Then it's the default command prompt and then we have dynamic entries. These were created dynamically because I'm using WSL version two and I installed these operating systems. So as an example, if I search for Ubuntu, I have Ubuntu, I have the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS app, and I have the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS app. I got these from the Microsoft Store, which is where you get Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal is free. So if you just search for Windows Terminal, you'll be able to download this. It's only about six meg in size, so very, very small. Mine's already installed here, as you can see, so I can simply launch it but all you need to do is click get and then click install to install this application, very easy to install. So these are dynamic entries. These are virtual machines running within WSL version two. Windows Terminal was automatically updated because I installed these applications. I've also got the default of Azure. And then here I've got my own entries that I created, such as SSHing to a Cisco Nexus device. So back in Windows Terminal, click on the down arrow here, notice SSH to Cisco Nexus. I've specified the name of this entry as well as the tab title. The command that I'm running here is SSHing to a device on the internet. This is a Cisco device once again hosted by Cisco on port 8181. That is literally using the SSH command that is available in command prompt. So this is a Windows SSH to that device. Here I'm doing something very similar. I'm SSHing to a Cisco 1941 router. So back in Windows terminal, notice that's this entry. But what I'm also doing here is specifying the command, which is SSH, and I'm adapting the security protocol used. Cisco devices use older encryption algorithms so I'm telling Windows Terminal to SSH to that device using AES-256 encryption. The username is WSL2, and this is the IP address of my router. If you don't specify the cipher used, the connection will be refused. So you have to specify the cipher here. I've also specified the background image, which is temp 1941 v3 JPEG. So that's this little image here. That is the image that's displayed when I open up that tab. So SSH to 1941 router. Notice that there's the image. The SSH session is permitted even though an older cipher is used. I'm not stretching the image. If I didn't specify that option, the image would be stretched across the terminal. I'm putting it in the bottom right and I'm specifying how opaque that image is. This is in a value of zero to one. And this is another reason why I really like Microsoft Visual Studio. Notice it gives me options. So if I press enter here and double inverted commas, notice I see all the options that are available to me. And I can simply add them. Much easier than trying to do this in Notepad or something else. Here I've got an Ubuntu SSH connection. So notice here, I'm starting WSL. This is not using SSH in Windows. This is using SSH within this Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL. So I'm running Ubuntu, I'm SSHing to the device, 
And notice I'm specifying my algorithms such as Diffie-Hellman, group one, SHA-1. I'm specifying the encryption, which is AES-128, specifying my username and the IP address of the device that I'm gonna SSH to. So once again, with Cisco devices, you need to specify your ciphers, otherwise the connection is refused. And lastly, I've got a Telnet session to that router. Notice the command used is Telnet and the IP address of the device. So Windows Terminal gives you a lot of options. Once again, I'm SSHing to a Cisco router here. I've specified a background image. On this PowerShell, I've changed the colors. I've also changed the icon. In this example, I'm using an Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two to SSH to a Cisco router. So many options available in this application. And I'm only just talking about some of the options. There are many, many options available. Have a look in the documentation if you wanna customize this even more and learn about options that you can change. One more that I'll mention, which I forgot, is I want to copy text when it's selected because I'm used to doing that with PuTTY. By default, that's set to false, but notice here, if I just copy this and then right click, it's automatically copied and pasted. So select it to copy, right click to paste. That works because I set copy on select to true. There are many, many options available in this application, but I'm hoping that this gives you a taste of what's possible. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.